Hello, good evening. Welcome to the class. Let's wait just a couple of minutes for the people to come.
Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. We're gonna start tonight. And this is the class of today. So, and of course, here below you will find the, the question for today. Also, uh, remember that we need to go and move to the homework 2.5. It's going to be just uh, a matter for you to, to click on the right option for this one, okay? So it's going to be two parts, four questions on this one, and on the other one is going to be five questions. And uh, I hope everybody is doing well in the platform. So we're going to check the attendance, of course. So let me just go back there. And uh, here we go. Ada Susana Cáceres Mendoza. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Dani Josué García Martínez. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iliana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. So everybody, welcome to the class. And uh, sorry. Oh, of course, I want to check it here. Nobody else is missing, right? Present, here in okay. the cloud. Daniel as well, and Ada, okay. Let me just check here. Okay, perfect. So we're going to continue with the class. So here's it. Okay. So we are going to check about business needs and goals. So this is like whenever you want to, to look for a training, right? So an institution or a person that is going to give you a training or give the company training. So business needs and goal, gap skills analysis, that is something that we checked yesterday, survey, maybe the only one that we haven't checked uh, very in deep is performance appraisal. So in your words, what is performance appraisal? I'm not sure. Do you hear me teacher? Yeah, yeah. I okay. I'm not sure if it's like a kind of recognition because of your performance in, in different areas, but for the overall, it's like a kind of recognition. Okay, yeah, in overall, it's kind of recognition. That is so true. What about, if we're talking about performance, what can be that one? It's an evaluation. It's an evaluation. An evaluation? Yeah, it's like assessing something that is going on about the performance. And then based on the and that evaluation, you will be able to identify if you need to provide more training to your employees or to design a, 
a program for training. So that will be it. Very good, perfect. So uh, uh, we're not gonna check into that one, but we're gonna check a video, okay? So as usual, we're gonna see the video, check what we understood and then comment or provide opinions. So here we go, my friends. Hey guys, so you've done your application, you've done your orientation, you've got your offer letter, and it's time for the real deal. So in this video, we're gonna talk about and show you what the first day looks like. Now before we start, we're the Sugar Family. We do a lot of DIY, vlogs, product reviews, funny skits, and just random videos like this. So if that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. Now this is going to be our third video on the Amazon warehouse experience. If you missed the first two videos, I'll link them in the description down below. So now let's go ahead and get started. Now if you're like me, I've never worked at an Amazon warehouse or any warehouse job before. So I didn't know what to expect. I was a little intimidated because the warehouse is so enormous and there's just so many people. Now let's talk about the first day. When you first walk in, the security office is going to give you a picture ID and it's gonna look either blue, like this, or white, like this. Now, the white means that you're a seasonal or a temporary employee, and you're eligible to work towards a blue ID, which is basically a regular employee. Now, this picture ID is very important. Without this ID, you will not be able to enter or exit the building. You can also use your picture badge ID as a way to clock in and clock out at designated areas. They use a system called Kronos, and you might be already be familiar with that. Now your first day paperwork would look like this. This paper is very important as it'll have like your locker information, your employee ID, your login for Amazon A to Z. Amazon A to Z is an app that you can download on your smartphone. It's basically like HR on your mobile phone. You can go to Amazon A to Z on desktop as well, but I find it much easier if you just download the app. Now your Amazon A to Z app is like your manager. You can clock in and out using your phone, check your schedule, request time off, check notification, find out the HR information, check your pay information, and you can even resign or quit straight from your phone. Because you can do everything from this app. There's little to no human interaction. Now on your first day, you may be split up into small groups depending on the area that you'll be working at and you'll be partnered up with a learning ambassador, which is a fancy way of them saying a trainer. The trainer will show you where the break rooms are, depending on your warehouse. You may have multiple break rooms. I know because of COVID, uh, they made a lot of different eating areas so that people would be more spread out. And in those break rooms, they'll have access to refrigerators, microwaves, and a lot of vending machines. After that, they may show you your lockers. Many of these places, the locks are combination locks. So if you haven't used one since high school, um, it may take you a while to kind of access your lockers. I don't use the lockers because they're not always conveniently located. I do see many people bring like clear small backpacks uh, that they carry around so that they don't have to use their lockers. So that might be something to consider. Now on your first day, the trainers will also give you what I call an Amazon starter pack. It usually consists of a box cutter, a pair of gloves. Now these gloves have a rubber side to them, so for extra grip. They have all kinds of different sizes, but they give these out during your first day. And if you lose any of this stuff, you can also get them replaced for free at no additional cost. A glove holder or utility holder, I guess. Just kind of clip this to your gloves and then clip the other side to like your belt or your pants. They also give you a badge ID for your arm. They're gonna give you a lanyard if you decide to use it to hold your badge ID as well. Now, I didn't know any of this stuff when I got hired, so I went out and bought my own gloves. I ended up never using it, but now you know, so you can save yourself some money. All this stuff is provided for you for free. They have vending machines located all around the warehouse that you can replace any of this stuff. I've seen it where some employees get new gloves every week because they do wear out and you may have to replace them every so often. 
Now once they've given you your badge ID, your first day paperwork, your starter kit, they're gonna take you to your work area. The trainer will explain to you what you'll be doing at your area. Most of the work at Amazon is not difficult. It's just very boring and very repetitive. It's nobody to talk to. A lot of times you're isolated and you're doing the same task 10 to 11 hours a day. The trainers may come around every so often to check up on you. Now each warehouse uh, has a lot of different jobs and work areas. At the Amazon Fulfillment Center that I work at, uh, the things that I do is pack, induct, and rebend. I'll go into detail about what each of those jobs look like in the next video. But basically, packing is packing. Um, sometimes you may have to put one item in one box and sometimes you may have to put multiple items in one box depending on the area that you're working at. And each area has a rate that they want you to be at. For single pack, which is one item for one box, they may want you to do 100 items an hour. And then if you're in an area that packs multiple items per box, they may want you to pack 180 items an hour. Now inducting is basically you scanning an item and putting it in a tray. So that's all you do. You just scan, put it in the tray. Scan, put it in a tray. You may do that for three, four hours, or you may do that all day, uh, depending on your work area once again and, and how they switch things up. And then the last job in my area is called rebend. Uh, that's basically you putting the item on the correct shelf so that the packers can grab that item and package it. That's how you do. You just grab the item and there's going to be a light, an LED light that tells you where to put that item on the shelf. So you just grab it, put it on the shelf. Grab it, put it on the shelf. I know that it sounds simple enough, but there are things that come up that can make your job a little difficult. But I'll go in detail with all of that in the next video. Well guys, that pretty much sums up uh, this first day expectation video. I hope Okay, so that was like the first day at Amazon's warehouse. So opinions, comments? One of my best friends, uh, she works there. So uh, I saw those pictures uh, like two or three weeks ago because she came here last week. She came just for a few days, spending some vacation time. And she was explaining exactly the same. She used to stand up for a long period of time. And she got sick at the beginning because it's very demanding. But yes, everything is, people is isolated because now with the COVID-19, they made like, um, island spaces i don't know something like that and, and sometimes she puts her her cell phone in the same way this guy made in front and nobody's looking at and she was uh, making like a like a video call that five four minutes just to show us how the the environment is but it, yes very interesting very demanding that is true i mean you can see that it seems that it's a simple job, right? It's like to put in things all day long, but it's very demanding and mm -hmm. it's very tired. So, and uh, how, how was the, the sickness? I mean, you said that your friend was sick. So what happened to her? It's because uh, as you know, in all these, uh, these buildings, uh, the bathroom, the restrooms, they are on a different distance. And she got sick because uh, she was like, I don't know if I can use this word, retaining. Okay, yeah. To, okay, to go to the to, to the bathroom. And uh, the healthy uh, standard is that you may go to, to the bathroom every two hours for, by the way, how can I say this for, to go for for number one or number two <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do whatever, whatever exactly so the doctor <laughs> says that doctor the doctor says that that is the, the healthy way but she spent like five six hours not going to the, the restroom and, and so she got sick of her kidneys. back but also the okay. i don't know how to say the kidneys i guess huh? yeah, the kidneys Kidney, kidney, 
kidneys. Uh -huh. Kidney. Ah, okay. She, uh, she got sick. And, and, and that is the reason why uh, she came here like in a short period to make some uh, studies, some uh, uh, exams and, and you know, in your country, you know the doctor, you know, they know you and it's easy to, and you spend less than being there. So that is the reason why she came. And she usually, before she came, she usually sent us pictures for those places, but it's a demanding job. And she, at the same time, is the first time she was working on graveyard. And that oh, was, yeah. her body was like, yeah, it was collapsing. Yeah, mm -hmm. that is collapsing. hard. I mean, because mm -hmm. the job was the money and also working the at graveyard. night. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's not good. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Thank you for your comments, Anna mm -hmm. Claudia. Anybody else? Something that <clears throat> that my blowing <laughs> and for me was the app Amazon A to Z. Uh, you can do all the kind of things uh, of your job just right here in the app. You can select the, your schedule. You can uh, everything, everything related uh, with the, each air, each R, sorry. Um, you can do that, the payment, uh, everything, uh, vacation, I, I imagine. That was, wow, amazing. Yeah, actually the person on the video was saying that there is no contact with other people, right? It's like the human resources department, there is no department, it's the app. There in the app, you can do anything. Yeah. You can check your schedule, request a day off. Actually, he says that you can resign, imagine that one. Yeah. I don't want this job anymore, you can resign there and you don't have yeah. to go to any office, like. like. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Amazing. Is on another level. Yeah, I mean, Amazon is, is totally different. They use actually some machine learning to, uh, maybe one day we're gonna see a video or are going to send it to the, to the chat. Uh, so you can check that they have machine learning and some robots in the warehouse. I mean, it's great. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I, I saw, I have seen that, yeah. Ah, it's crazy. So it's, it's a different level of technology and understanding of the job and things like that. So very good, very good. Any other comments or opinion? I have just one opinion uh, that I saw a particular app that the most of the US companies have. And those kinds of apps are really useful because uh, you could check your, your schedule and also you could apply for a leave of absence. Um, well, uh, have a lot of information that you could uh, check every every single day. Yeah, that so is true. I, I mean, guess that this country, uh, well, the company from this country has to implement uh, something like that. Well, my company is a US company, but we have a- We, a, have, so, we have one. Yeah. We have one so similar. Very good, perfect. Yeah, you know, yeah, nowadays technology really is, is everywhere and definitely maybe here is not the latest technology, but some companies they are investing in this kind of thing. So it's very good, very interesting, right? So that they're in your, on your cell phone, you will be accessing all that information or that technology. So very good. Perfect, any other comments, any other opinion about the video? About, about the activities, they, uh, he was mentioned about the activity was so repetitive and if you are not, uh, I forgot this, um, acostumbrado, get used, okay? Yeah. If, you, if you don't uh, get used to these kind of activities, uh, maybe you can, uh, maybe you can get bored uh, easier, okay? 
that is so true. I mean, actually a question that I uh, arise to myself is attrition, right? How this big, huge company uh, makes the people to stay in their job. I mean, mine to be there one day, one week, one month, one year doing the same job. In my opinion, probably they change, they switch jobs, right? Maybe you are here three months, but then they have to go to other area. That's something or a strategy that they might implement. Because if you are there doing the same activity that is boring, and also that your muscles are going to feel that are, are doing something there in your body, so maybe it's not going to be good. And maybe a lot of people will resign. Probably some people will try to become a supervisor or to go to other area, get more money, but not all the people can do that one. I mean, there are just a few positions. So how, how do you believe they manage attrition in this big company? In your own opinion, No comments. Well, I believe it's challenging, right? It's challenging that you as the human resources, I mean, department to try to keep everybody there. So it should be, it should be very difficult. But you as an employee also, it's difficult to do the same activities, routinary activities, stand up all day long. I mean, that should be something that is not that good. But I have another question for you. So this is like the first day at Amazon. So he was saying some important things. For example, that there is a trainer that goes with you and shows you many things, right? So, and also that you have a paper with all the plain information. So what do you think about that one? So it's, that is part of uh, new employee training. So do you believe that is, is good or would you change something about what he said there in the video? It brought my attention that he said it's like the funny way. I don't remember if he used the word funny, that they use the word ambassador. But it's the mentor they assign you. Uh, it's like right. a way they have, the particular way they have to do the, the process that all the companies must do, but they add that little detail, uh, not uh, set the expectation or the barrier on your or your mindset this is my mentor this no it's your ambassador it's like a friendly word yeah, <laughs> that, that was funny for me. actually that works you know because uh i mean i believe that throughout the company they they have a lot of people that help the new employees and maybe they provide a shirt or anything that is just for that kind of people and sometimes that makes a difference mm -hmm. in this kind of jobs and if you have a job that is similar to that one, you know that if you are doing something that is the same every single day, of course, after one, two, three years, mm -hmm. and you are burnt out, right? Yeah. Very good. Any other opinion about this first day at Amazon? No other. So I have another question for you. So do you remember the first day or the first week at your job? Uh, it was, I mean, I believe that there was a training. How was the training? Could you please share with us what was the training like? Uh, what did you do? If you believe it was good or it was, it needed to be improved. Tell us about that one. Hi, good evening. Really? Well, in my current job, uh, I don't have a, a, what, a previous or first 
big day because um, I remember that they um, was prepared the they were prepared the office because they la vendieron they sold the office okay and I just uh, come to the office to as to signature my contra contract mm -hmm. and it was my inductions to my job and after that I come here to, to my house and give a uh, training about the activities at work but um, in my previous job we decided um, the airport I was working in Avianca and I remember that we visited the airport in some specific areas and the induction was about three days, I guess. Um, we visited uh, the, um, the office and did a lot of activities and try to uh, have a connection with the next of the of the employee, new employees because I remember that it was around 15 persons, I guess, but in my current just was two, just were two. And that, that's why I, I imagine that we didn't have a, a big um, first day. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, anyways, do you believe that that could have been improved? Mm, not really, because uh, I think that sometimes uh, the big first day it was uh, is why um, the company is too big, maybe, and maybe they try to show all the department or all the activities and something like that. But in my current job, it's a hard uh, company, but they have the big operation in another country. So there in El Salvador, were, we were around 40, 40 people, I guess. And well, I, I was saying that when I uh, start my current job, they, already all no I already already sold the camp the the get the physical place so actually I didn't have contact with the rest of the employees so I imagine that the company tried to give a big birthday because they have a, a place and maybe they have a, a lot of employees and they try to give some, um, I don't know, maybe they try to, no sé, como que lo hacen sentir en familia, no sé. It I, makes I, you feel like, like as part of the family. Yeah, they, yeah, they try to uh, include the rest of the camp, the, the rest of the employees and try to, uh, give, uh, I don't know, se, se, oh, ¿cómo sería? Tratan de hacerlo sentir confortable. They try to uh, make you feel make you feel comfortable. Yeah, okay. make yeah. you feel comfortable. And that's the reason why I imagine that the company tried to do that. But when you don't need to um, share with the rest of the employees because you always working at home, for example, and maybe you don't need a big first day at, at the end, at the, at the first time. Okay, very good, perfect. Sounds interesting. Thank you for your comment. Okay. Anybody else wants to share? about your training, your first week, what happened?
Okay, nobody else wants to share. Anyways, we're gonna go and start the reading for today. This is about how to choose the right training method, the right, con uh, let's say people that is going to provide that one. So, and it says choosing the right training delivery methods can sometimes be a daunting process. There are lots of things to consider budget versus price, location, number of learners, downtime, outcomes. With many options provided by training providers, deciding on the right training techniques for your workforce can be difficult. Let's check some vocabulary here. What is downtime? You can check the dictionary or something there online so you can explain. So downtime, anybody can please look for the word. And tell us, what is that about? Daunting. Uh, I'm looking in the Cambridge, Cambridge Dictionary. Mm -hmm. Okay. And daunting, daunting meaning is um, making, making you feel slightly frightened or worried about your ability to achieve something. And there is an example. The country was faced with daunting prospect for, of overcoming for decades of division. Um, Very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, Can that it is- be like intimidate or overwhelmed? Yeah, uh, yeah something like that. Overwhelmed, uh, intimidating. So you were afraid. Sometimes that happens whenever you want to make a change in the process or you are going to do a big difference in the company. Sometimes you can be daunting about that step that you're gonna take. But well, new vocabulary, remember to try to use it in the everyday activities. What is budget? I know that you know, but tell me, what is that? <clears throat> is the money that you reserve for a maybe for an investment, okay? Uh, uh, for example, the budget that you have to uh, buy a car, the money that you have to buy a car, okay? Very good, so that is budget. This is like the money that you plan to spend in something, right? So there is a plan for that one, good. What is downtime? Uh, maybe when you need more time to do something. Okay, so that is an idea, very good. Any other idea on downtime? Maybe when a thing is not uh, working properly. Okay, yeah, that sounds very similar. But, but but the time that the time when this thing is not working properly. Okay. So yeah, like, down, go ahead. Yeah, like uh, inactive time. Very good, inactive time. Time that you are not able to work because of, imagine that for example, that you are going to change the server of the company. I mean, in their real life, that is going to be at night and you are going to test the servers and there are many things that you're gonna do, right? Of course, you are going to calculate how much time is going to take for that one, but there might be the possibility that on Monday, the first day, uh, maybe the server is not working properly and then the system is not going to work. So that is downtime. Whenever it's not Process. possible to work. I'm sorry? Uh, when, some time, when something crash, but this period is uh, the downtime, okay? Exactly. When uh -huh. it's, it's like an sometimes they are like scheduled for maintenance right because in my company happens a lot <laughs> they and make the announcement most of the time they use the pacific time between 11 and 11 p.m and to 1 a.m and they announce that they are going to these tool uh, will be downtime for maintenance blah, blah, blah. Mm. that is true so it's whenever like the time that's been lost right yeah. Because of any other activity. Yeah. 
because of something that you're doing, implementing a new procedure, uh, getting a new machine, many things may cause a downtime. So that's something that we take in consideration when we're talking about training. I mean, for example, in mind that the company really needs a training that is going to take, I don't know, 60 hours. But you need the training, you need people to be trained as soon as possible. So you need to take in consideration. Uh, maybe it's better for us to close, close two or three days and try to do the training, right? So that is something that might be happening. So key things to consider. Let's see. Um, Ana Claudia, could you please read number one? Force, uh, key. Yes, <laughs> Nah, no worries. Like, okay, key things to consider. What are the desired learning outcomes? According to many training processes can be grouped into the following phrases. Needs, analysis, design, development, implementation, and evaluation. Taking this into account, the most logical place to start when deciding on any training intervention is to establish the training needs and agree on the learning outcome perspective from the training. This can help you to focus your attention on the option that will give you the best returns. Good. What did you get from this? Uh, that is important to plan and to organize the trainings in these uh, groups they already identified the people involved in that, uh, needs, analysts, analysis, design, uh, development. What is the most important to, to, to realize or to take in, uh, in which order to follow up? And um, we need to organize, not for all the companies will be in the same order, depending on the task you must do. Uh, so, the impact uh, in a company on how the employees will do their best, it will be, it will start depending on the way how you decide that training will start. And I agree with this because in my, in my account, there are a lot, a lot of information that you may know because you do everything. So in this case, for example, we've seen people that they are, they feel frustrated. They think they can, they are not able, they're not cap capable to, to realize the task. And at the end, they resign because there is a lot of information and it's important for the team, the one in charge of this, start step by step in order to not frustrate the new hires. That happens a lot. Very good, perfect. Yeah, your analysis was very accurate. Actually, this is very important. And of course, there are many things that they can do depending on, on the company and the department and the mm -hmm. tasks that you need to, to do. Good. And what I really like what it says, processes can be grouped into the following phases. So uh, the processes in the company are like this, analysis, design, development, implementation, evaluation. There are many, many things that you can do and you can focus on the one that is the, that, that needs more attention, that you need to address something. So that is very, very important. I don't think there are new words on this one. So let's go to number two, Heidi. Who are you training? When deciding on the right training methods for your learner, it is important to understand who they are and how they respond best to training. What are their job roles and what are their preferred learning styles? For example, technical employees are likely to respond well to hands-on training where they get to try out new skills they have learned. On the other hand, office-based staff might prefer the classroom training route. The learning styles of these individuals are also an important consideration as different people learn in different ways. This is a particularly the case for different generations. In a report written by To Go Training, it states for the first time in modern history, 
we have four generation, generations of workers in the workplace. The conflicts of this generational dynamics immediately change how we deliver learning or training to these different groups. Millennials, for example, like structure and technology and also are likely to learn best from interactive sessions using various technologies, whereas the baby boomers might prefer more traditional forms of training. Perfect. What did you get from this? The, uh, before we decide the way we are going to train our workforce, we have to know about uh, who we are going to train based on, on as, as this, this text says, as, uh, taking note about the age. You cannot train the same way and, and I don't want to say old people, but you cannot train the same way um, senior people than young people because they they might learn in a better way in different kind kinds of training. So before before we decide the kind of training, we have to find out who are who are we going to train. Very good, perfect. So actually, that is true. I mean, it's not going to be the same depending on the department, if it's the technician or if it's the manager or if it's, uh, I mean, the staff uh, is going to be different. Yeah. The age is, uh, is important. Actually, here it says millennials and baby boomers, they are in different ways. So maybe a question for everybody is then what we should do. It might be that we have a, a department for around 40 people. And those 40 people, they are 20 years old. The other people are 30 years old. Another people, they are like 40 years old. And the other are like around 45, 50 years old. How? How can we identify the best way to provide a training? What do you think we should do in that kind of situation? When you have that mix, maybe one part of them must get used to the, the other way because uh, when you have a uh, 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 that kind of, of team well the greatest part is going to be young so the others have to adjust to this kind of trainings okay very good that is a good approach to check how many we have on ages and of course maybe the the one from 20 or 30 years old are going to be the the most of them the majority so you can yeah because you cannot train in a way to 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 a group and and take another way to train another group is it's very hard to do that in our companies yeah it's very hard it's i mean it's not possible to create just a train for this kind of people and another training for another kind of people so that probably is not going to work for the company itself Good. Maybe another thing is to make some some kinds of uh, training, right? So you say, well, we have half and a half. We can provide this kind of training at the beginning and then move to the other part uh, using technology or practice itself. That might be another thing. Okay, uh, number three, that is going to be for Juan Miguel brand. Okay, number three. How many learners do you have and where are they based? The number of employees requiring a certain training pro program or, pro or program. Program, uh -huh. Program. Um, okay, I'll start again. The okay. number of employees requiring a certain training program will ultimately affect your choice of training techniques. If you only have a handful of people to train, then the most cost effective method is to book them on to open courses offered by your training provider. Larger numbers can warrant a group booking delivered at the provider's center or on site at your pre premises. Or, yes, premises? Yes, premises, yeah. Okay. This means that your employees can be trained together and training can often be tailored to your business. One of the main issues we find developed training clients face is downtime. 
there is pressure on learning and development professionals to ensure training doesn't impact on the operation of the business. As a result, elements such as the location of the training versus the location of the learners should also be, cons should also be considered. To reduce downtime, downtime, it is recommended that learners book on, book on two their closest open course or for larger groups, some providers can bring the training to you. Good, what did you get from this one? Um, there is, a, the, there was a thing that a, is mentioned on the, on the reading about a, when you have many people to train a, at the same time, okay, maybe. A, and, uh, the the cost of this downtime is uh, higher uh, because um, you have many people in in this kind of trainings. Okay, so uh, uh, obviously if they go to another place, but uh, there was there 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 was. Uh, in the reading, they uh, that says that uh, you you can uh, um, lower the costs. Lower the uh, costs. Uh -huh. Lower the cost. Maybe if the train, if the people who who deliver the training is a uh, um or move to, to your, uh, to your facility, facilities in order to uh, trying to reduce the downtime. And um, you can ask to the, to the trainers uh, to, um, to, that, that the training is the most close to your needs or to your needs, okay? Um, I think it's, it, it was one of the main ideas. Okay. Yeah, I, I believe that uh, you are right. I mean, actually how many learners is uh, something that we need to, to consider because it's going to make an impact. It, imagine that you need to train everybody. Like for example, mm -hmm. for the banks, every year they have to do uh, money laundry training. So that is mandatory. So they have to train every single person. So you need to, you need to address this uh, in a proper way, right? So it's very important. Good, let's check some words. What is a program? Maybe all the plan, uh, all the all this material signatures, yes. Okay. Yeah. All the signatures or all the courses that you have to to receive in in the training, but when the training is so uh, extended. Very good. Yeah, it's a set of activities that you need to do so you can accomplish something, right? So, very good. Uh, let's see. A handful. What is a handful? Maybe many people. Well, actually, it's not that many. A handful is just a few. It's oh, okay. just a bunch. Just a bunch. Yeah, a bunch of people. Not that many, not everybody, just some of those. Good. Okay. okay. Yeah, like several might be. Several actually is a little bit more than a handful. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's see. Uh, what is warrant?
Uh, similar to maybe warranty. Okay. Uh, actually, that is a very good question. What is the difference then between warrant and warranty? Is warrant a noun? Well, warrant actually is a verb. A verb. Warranty is a noun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that happens a lot in English, you know. Okay, yeah, warrant is like you guarantee something to happen in a very good way, right? What is uh, on site? In the place? Yeah, in the physical place. So whenever in, they, uh, I'm sorry, the go ahead. Very good, in the facility. So that means that the trainer comes to our company, right? And it's going mm -hmm. to deliver the training there. Let's see. Uh, let's see. I, I remember there was another one. I don't remember which one. No, there are no other. Okay, very good. So what is a jar budget that is going to be for Yvonne? Will you please help me with number four? What is the budget? Your training budget is an essential cog in the decision-making process. In a survey carried out on developed training client, 20% said budget constraints are key issue for them. When you have all of the answers to the above question, you can look at how to effectively use your budget to achieve the desired outcomes. For example, if you have a group of employees to training, you can speak to your training provider to see if your course can be delivered on your site. This will reduce the cost in terms of the travel and accommodation expenses. Perfect, what did you get from this? Um, I don't understand very well that. So you need to have a budget when you are planning a, a training. You need a plan. And you need to identify, for example, uh, the group uh, of your employees that can receive the training. And you need to plan, I don't know, the place. Okay, very good. Yeah, actually the budget is something that is maybe one of the most important things about delivering a training or get some people to come and train your people, right? I really like, I really like about this, that it says that this is the last part. I mean, for first of all, you need to check the, the needs. You need to check how many people you're gonna train. You need to check many things. And at the end, whenever you identify how urgent, how important is that, how many people are going to be trained, then you can check about your budget. Of course, you have a budget for this kind of things, but then you have to decide. Probably look for different options, right? Uh, but, well, you have some money to spend into that one. Maybe you cannot spend that much, or maybe you have a lot of money and that is not important, but it's the last part. That's what I really like about this part, so. Okay. What is the meaning of COG? Okay, that is actually the first question, everybody. What is COG? You can check in the dictionary and tell us about. Okay. 
Uh -huh. What is cog, everybody? Have you checked into that? Um, essential piece or method? Mm, essential, yeah, piece it might be, yeah. The essential like, uh, yeah, something like that one, right? Uh, somebody's sweating here. Okay, no worries, Jose Alfredo. Please try to come back as soon as possible. Okay, so cog, yeah, it's like a piece that is important for this kind of thing, so. In mechanical, it's like a gear. Yeah, it's like a gear, like a wheel. Very good. Yeah. Okay, let's see something else. Uh, there are some other words. Constraints. What is to constraint? Maybe uh, the restrictions. Restrictions. Very good. Okay, so yeah, restrictions, limitations, things like that. Very good. Let's see um, above. What is above? Regarding. I'm sorry. Regarding. Above, uh, uh -huh. up. <laughs> up, yeah, <laughs> actually this is a preposition, yeah, above. On the, Just on the top of. On the top of, very good. So remember that we're gonna use above when we're talking about flat surfaces, right? And something is above another thing. It's not the same of up and down, it's, it's different. Okay. Okay, let's see what is... Uh, Let's see, let's see. No, I guess our oh, well, accommodation, what is that? Arrangement. Yeah, like physical arrangements, right? Where you're gonna stay. I mean, sometimes when you, when you are getting into training, sometimes you need to go to other city. And so there are arrangements for you to stay at the hotel for your food and things like that. So that is something that happens. Okay, before we move on to the other part, we're going to check the attendance because it's nine already. So let's see. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present teacher. Good. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present teacher. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Albanés. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Present teacher. Good. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present teacher. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Ibet Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Sulema Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Very good. So let's move on with the class. Okay, so available training methods. Now that you have considered all the above elements, you are ready to select the most appropriate training delivery methods. Below, uh, this is the opposite of above. Uh, we look at some of the most popular options. So, um, let me think. Yeah, there are no words here, I guess. 
Okay, so the first one is going to be for Maria Alejandra Barrientos. Okay. Uh, open courses. Open courses and set courses, they usually delivered at your training provider center. Anyone can book on to these courses and they are usually the best training technique. If you only have a handful of people to train on a particular subject, dependent on the subject courses can involve both classrooms, teaching and practic practical sessions. Good, what did you get from this? is for a, a small groups or like this a, a for to the institution or to provide that or bring that information and make that these courses have a um, book or uh, how is it that when you pay for courses or I, and you make a groups and put a different person that you um, learn for a different topic? Okay, yes, actually this is like very general, right? Open courses, I like all the courses that are available either in the company for anybody to take those. So you can learn a little more and they are about different topics. Some of those are about production. Some of those are about relationship, uh, conflict management. I mean, there are many open courses so anybody can take it at any time. And the good thing is that it says that the liberal method might vary. I mean, it might be like, uh, it, classroom or practical sessions might be online so there are many ways of it okay let's see there are no words in this one i guess what is that technique oops a method very good like a method like the way you're going to do something right Okay, group courses. That is going to be for, let me check, Raymond. Hello, Raymond. Ramon. Not possible, I guess. Okay, Ada, could you please help us with number two? Yes, teacher. And number two, group groups. If Correct. you have learned number of employees to training, then groups course is something to consider. The course are often priced at set groups, right? And they with the option to hold the course at this at the training provider's venue or something at your own. Um, Premises this rule is very cost effective. This also allows your employees to attend training together, which can add a good thing building exercise. It is the is the very important is the realize the, the group course are the benefits is a is a reunion meeting. meeting. Is a meeting the a lot of employees is depend the benefits and the is a uh, the other people is uh, pay attention and the uh, is a uh, the, the the disadvantage is a uh, is a uh, no learning the is the complete the course. Okay, very good. So yeah, group courses is the next option. And uh, well, this is whenever you want a lot of people to 
to learn or to have upgrade the skills, right? So uh, the good thing about this one is about pricing. It says that uh, you can, uh, what well, the rate for this one is going to be for group. So that is a good thing that you are not going to spend a lot of money into that one. It's supposed to. I'm sorry. The chat, okay. Okay, let's see if we can find some words here. Uh, venue, what is the provider's venue? The place, uh, when, the, when the, the place where the, the training is to be delivered. Very good, that is it, it's like the place, right? And actually the other word is kind of similar or sometimes at your premises. So this happens a lot in English. We cannot repeat words, right? It's something that we avoid to do. Even in Spanish is that way as well. Uh, let's see, that is no other. Okay, bespoke courses. That is going to be for Roxana Sensio. Okay. These book courses are tailored. Tailored is correct. Yeah, tailored. Uh -huh. Okay. These uh, book courses are tailored to the individual requirement of or of your business. Going down this route will enable enable you to tailor your training to your specific learning outcome, company policies, budget and location. If you have an issues or training need, try, pardon. If you have an issues or training need that is specific to your businesses, then these are the training delivery medals for you. Okay, what did you get from this? Let me see. Well, um, in the first one, uh, you need to uh, you need to uh, organize uh, the method and looking for a technique that. Uh, it's adapting to your needs in your company or, uh, or, or about your activities. Uh, for example, if you are um, working in a final area that share um, or working with a specific um, account, for example, maybe you, you as a company need to um, get a specific tools like a program and your um, training is about that. And you need to adapt that information or that activities in your um, trainings or your uh, capacities or something like that. Okay. Very good, perfect. So actually, yeah, that is kind of the opposite from the other one. So the other one was group courses, but this is more for individuals. When mm -hmm. you need one, maybe two, three people to get a training, to get better or to learn some skills, that is a, a bespoke course. So, and uh, you will be able to tailor says, your training to a specific needs. So you need specifically mm -hmm. this and then you will be able to get exactly what you need. So that uh, is- In my uh, company, I just want to mention something. I don't know if mm, this practice fits in that. Uh, we got office hours and there are people, they name them SME. They are, let's say the specialized team or people for specific topic or tool. So if the company, um, uh, see or detect that we are failing in any policy or the usage of a tool or they want to improve this or that, they launch like office hours. 
So there is a Google Meet, it's like a room open, anybody can join. And if it's just you, you can ask all the questions, all the doubts you may have regarding that. I don't know if those office hours will be in this type of courses because those are, they are trying to train or specialize people in one specific topic. Yeah, that, that is part of that one, actually. Yeah, when you're specialized in something and some, I mean, there are specific training for specific needs, it's uh -huh. something like that. And they launch the office hours. So uh, what they are looking for that every is everybody can join uh, in the best schedule that fits your need. And if you have questions or if you have anything, information you need, they the, the one the specialist in that area they can answer individually man that i think those i'm oh, sorry we cannot hear you oh i told you that uh i think that is a good practice and uh, i like them the office hours very good yeah actually it's very good i mean you will have the time to check into that one uh, it's, it's a good practice actually mm -hmm. not all the companies maybe, have that go ahead maybe the companies uh, use that uh, point when they are looking for a leadership position because it's a individual training and maybe you don't have any any position like that very true that is so true so whenever they are looking for leaders to manage departments mm -hmm. and things like that there is where you can specialize into that one. Yeah. Good. Number four is e-learning. That is going to be for, let me just check. It's going to be for Roberto Luis. I guess it's not possible for you, right? Um, Jose Wilfredo. Is uh, e-learning or blended learning? E-learning. E-learning. E-learning is learning by electronic media, electronic media, usually by the in internet. It also individuals to learn at a location of their choice. It is very cost effective, reduces downtime, downtime and removes the need to travel. Having said this, e-learning removes the personal and team building elements created by face-to-face -face training. It also doesn't allow for practical session where learners can practice their skills when considering this option. You should think carefully about the learning outcomes and learning styles of your employees. Good, what did you get from this? Um, well, the e-learning is the most advantage method to use uh, to avoid downtime or reduce downtimes. Um, and also maybe uh, you don't need to travel to a different location to receive the training. So that's, is really efficient. Very good. Actually, the word that you use is very nice. It's efficient and it's, I mean, it's not going to be that expensive. Uh, it's very good. For me, uh, in my own experience, it is uh, maybe the best method, depending, of course, of the technique that they are going to use to provide the training, but it's a very good thing. Okay. But of course, depending on the need, might be other ones. So number five, blended learning. That is going to be for Jose Osmin. Okay. So, blend, blended learning is a common sense concept that results in a great learning success. In a nutshell, it means using more than one training technique to train on one subject training today using blended learning you can craft your course to the learning style of the employees 
you are training and by using a mix of method you can ensure that all learners effectively <laughs> effectively retain the information you will receive the great wasted return of your investment from this training delivery method which could involve a mix of the of e learning assessment of face to face interventions good what did you get from this uh, let's see Oh, okay. So in order that they can get so the information, so you can like use another technique. So in order that they can get it like as soon as possible. So, but also in implementing so like uh, and like so. I think that that is that we had to like they had to check so the skills so in order that so how they can learn or how or what is the information that you can provide them in order that they can get it like immediately so in the training okay very good perfect thank you so yeah that is like when you don't use just one method you use two or maybe more methods you can mix them so Actually, that is uh, the question. What is blended, everybody? Like a mix or combined? Or... A mix, uh-huh, a mix. Very good, mix, combination or anything like that. Nutshell, what is something in a nutshell? I, I don't know. Okay. When you say something like in a nutshell, it's like in a wrap up, it's like in a few words, in a, in an easy way for you to understand. So that is in a nutshell. So something that is like reduced for a few words. So it's easier to understand. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Um, craft. What is craft? In this um, in this context, can consider like uh, when you um, uh, when like you make, choose, make it up when you choose your own your own topics and your own techniques in order to uh, uh, to get the best results in the training. Okay. Very good, yes, yeah, it's something like that you can tailor the, the, your own way. Uh -huh. so it's like... Or custom. Custom, yeah, something very good. Custom, customized. Yeah. yeah, very good. Do with your own hands, they say. Huh. Let's see, uh, ensure, what is to ensure? Make sure. To make sure something happens, very good. Okay. We're gonna go to the other topic. That is this one. So it says as a former financial services UHR leader and now B2B sales trainer, I've been involved with corporate training for the best part of two decades. During that time, I've been a participant myself. I purchased training for my teams and more recently trained thousands of participants in large and mid-sized corporations. Okay, uh, actually this week, we're going to check some fluent reading. I'm, I'm remembering that one. So do you remember what is B2B? Business to business. Very good, perfect, business to business. And it says having both perspective planning and training provided has helped me gain a clear understanding of what to look when, uh, what to look for when uh, selecting a training provider. In particular, there are a few key questions I recommend anyone selecting a training provider must answer before deciding who to work with. So what we're gonna do here is to check how to select a training provider. That is like the core of this uh, article. That is not that long, actually. 
let me see if I can find some words here. I don't think so. Um, no, no. Okay, so this uh, first part is going to be for Marcus. Could you please help me with this? Okay, sure. Do they understand our industry and day-to-day -day reality? Many training providers are experts in a particular area or, and or industry. The best ones know to stay within that industry. Unfortunately, many don't, meaning they are perfectly happy to work with an autom automotive manufacturer today and all to the communication firm tomorrow. Same material, concept, concept and, is, and stories. Only the people in the room are different. One of participant mayors cries about training is that the trainer doesn't know anything about our industry, causing them to disengage from the content and discredit the trainer and their expertise all together. Perfect, what did you get from this? Okay. Um, okay, we're talking about how to select the accurate train trainer so in in this case uh, a key question that we had to uh, make is um, do the trainer uh, understand our industry so in that point we have to make sure that the trainer understand the industry of the company or the enterprise in order that they could um, train our, our employees the best way possible because if it's not that um, the people disengage from the content and yeah the trainer also they are uh, experts they have expertise in that area uh, it, it looks like they don't have so it's important to the, make sure the trainer understand the industry and the field, the area that is that required to be trained. Perfect. Yes, actually, I I totally agree on this one. You know, the first paragraph says that that some people, some companies that provide training, they do the same training for this company that is a manufacturer for cars, uh, or to the other one that is a telecommunication firm. Same material, the same thing. And uh, yeah, probably it's gonna work in, at some point, but I mean, the needs are different, right? People are different, the company is different, the industry is different. So it's not possible. It's not possible to, to do that one. So this is maybe one of the most important things whenever we're going to select a training provider. They understand what we need. They understand our company or industry. So probably they have to take the time to come in and research a little bit more about that, about our needs. Okay, let's check some words. Um, let's see, oh, there are not many actually. Oh, gripes, what is gripes? like complain about very good gripes is another word for complain something that you're not satisfied about so this is a good word for you to to change i mean you can use many words instead of one word that is the most common and uh, let's see uh, disengage what is disengage The opposite of engage or to be to be interested. Uh, inter oh, yeah. Very good. Not interested in something. Very nice. And what is this credit? Like a, um, lose their reputation. Very good. Lose the reputation. Very nice. 
Teacher, okay. is that the right way to cry it all together? I'm sorry? Is that the right way to cry it all together? The final word. Uh, uh, this one, expertise, you say? Uh, all together. Uh, all together. Yeah, all together is a word like together, but it's like, uh, you know, sometimes there are words that come from all the English, and this is a word that stay with us. So you can say together or all together. Teacher, all together could mm -hmm. be also um, like as a total. As a total, yeah. So everything mm -hmm. together, right? Good. And then it says when hire a training provider, make sure they display a deep understanding of your industry, business model, challenges, strategy, and uh, the day-to-day -day reality in which participants operate. So definitely this is, for me, one of the most important things that not all the companies do. So they say, I have a training for motivation and it's the same thing, right? So maybe not good. So number two, uh, this is going to be for, let me see. For uh, Danny. Yeah, sure. Uh, do they customize their content? Unfortunately, unfortunately, I still, unfortunately, I still see training that isn't customized. Generic one size fits one size fits all case studies studies or role plays from an entirely different industry are still common practices in classrooms across the globe. The globe. <clears throat> customization is, is key to effective learning unless participants have the ability to connect the learning to their day-to-day -day and practice in a safe environment before going out into the real world. How can we expect them to perform any better after training has taken place? When selecting insist that any training provider you select customizes core element of their training program like case studies, role plays, examples, and terminolo terminology. Good, what did you get from this one? Um, <clears throat> um, let me take a look. Um, I um, I understand that um, <clears throat> when you select a provider, you uh, you have to uh, to wonder if they uh, <clears throat> customize 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 uh, their um, content on the method or the way they going to uh, use to 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 deliver the the, the 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 courses right and then um, the provider have to um have to have the um, the ability to uh, to connect with with the audience with the employees um, and give them the um, a way to learn in a way that 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 that's be easy for for them they can use to in a day to day and before they in a in a safe environment before they going out to implement the the the, the knowledge they are uh, <clears throat> well learning <clears throat> very good yeah actually this is linked to the first one right so the first one was do they understand our industry or need so they have to come and research a little bit more. Once they research and they know what you want and what you need, then they will be able to do the second step, 
customize their account. Maybe, yes, there is like different things that uh, they want to provide in the training, but they're going to customize in a way that is going to be exactly for what the company needs. So that is very, very important. Okay, let's check some words. One size fits all. What is that phrase? Same size for everyone. The same for everyone. Not good in these kind of situations. Good. Uh, let's see. I don't think there are many others. No. Okay, number three. That is going to be for Francisco Eduardo. Is it possible for you, Francisco? Hello? Number three. Do they provide a learning journey? Journey. Learning is not an event. Most of what participants learn in a classroom is forgotten with day is if not quick according to es research 97 percent of all state training has not impact beyond 120 days to be effective any training must have a solid brain and both training components rework requires participants to reflect on their own behavior and provide for the classroom session. Post-training reinforcement helps participants to look down the learning as follow-up question and overcome the inevitable challenge that comes with implant. And what did you get from this one? Uh, I, I uh, understand that the import uh, to uh, have a pre and post training because uh, usually when uh, people uh, uh, learning something, uh, 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 they uh, it's possible they forgot uh, that that the uh, that uh, they learn uh, only only uh, uh, the or the better way for uh, this this people uh, learning uh, well uh, is a practice continue but the in this case uh, is uh, a, a post a post training okay yeah, actually this is also very very important the most of the people that delivers training is like that one i mean they go, they tell you this is what you need to do. Uh, they provide you the skills and then they go. But, well, it's important to have a pre-training that is the investigation and check about the people that works there in that department and the post-training. So there should be like reinforcement after that one, right? In my in that one, so 97% of all sales training has no impact beyond 120 days. That is, I mean, a huge rate, guys. Right? It's not, I mean. It's a, a higher percentage. <laughs> almost everything, right? So after 120 days, you won't remember anything that happened in the training. I mean, so not good. That is definitely not good. And companies, they need to research about that one and integrate that one in a way that is going to be possible to reinforce in the future. Very good. 
And the first line is also very, very important. Learning is not an event. It's not one thing that you do in one Saturday, right? So it's a process, it's something that goes beyond. Like the English classes, right? So you remember when you were learning the simple present tense, you got the rules, but then you have to practice. It takes time, definitely. Teacher, Go ahead. sorry. Uh, for example, uh, for example, is the in my case, in my job, this is the quiet use in the medical area. It is before they, they send you, you in, in the, the bill, in the in material, they send the material to be the prepared to ask the question and they be ready for the practice and they are in the workshop. It's very important. They send the, the materials. Yeah, actually that is very true. I mean, you will be able to check before and maybe the most important, the pre is very important, but the past training definitely is something very important. Yes, teacher. Okay, uh, let's check some words. Beyond, what is that? More from like something <laughs> cross the limits or I don't know. Very good. That's so it's like crossing the limit or the border or something like that. Good. And let's see what else. Behavior. What is behavior? actions okay yeah the actions that some people do right so that is their behavior uh, what is lockdown uh, in this context i think it's like um like block or go forget that that all the information very good yeah it's like like that like retain right very good mm -hmm. And what is to overcome? Mm, like get over? Very good. So when you have a challenge, a problem, and you overcome, you were able to solve that one. Perfect. Number four is going to be for Giselle. Okay, <clears throat> number four. Do they offer multi-channel hybrid learning options? Learning doesn't happen in the classroom alone. Virtually, everyone prefers different modes of learning. Effective learning needs to take a multi-channel, multimodal approach. Classroom sessions leave webinars, post-training live webinars, post training reinforcement, coaching, online learning models, Q&A sessions, podcast audio and email re reinforcement need to be combined into a powerful learning journey. Good, what did you get from this? Mm, give me a minute, teacher. That may be um, the, the method um, is not just based in like uh, the classroom, like the, in the first part of set. Uh, maybe the, the, the method could be like a hybrid option when the, the, the employees could learn presentially maybe in a classroom or virtually. And also they could uh, learn uh, through another um, method, like a mix, like we said before, hybrid or, or combined. 
method or like a combination of methods. Very good. Yeah, actually, that is something that is important. If they understand our needs and they are able to customize, of course, they will be able to, to think, well, if we just send somebody to speak two, three, four hours, it's not going to work. We need to, to combine things, right? And uh, yeah, you can do live webinars, uh, post-training reinforcement, uh, coaching, online learning modules, uh, questions and answers, sessions, postcards and audios, email reinforcement, all that, if it's combined, definitely the training is going to be successful because of that. It's not just the hours that is, you are going to be there in front of the people or with other people in a, in a session. So definitely this is very important. I don't see any new word here or word for us to check. Okay, number five. That is going to be for, let's see. Maria Alejandra. And do they measure progress? Uh, what the point of training is not to get better? Will a professional athlete? Athlete. Um, a musician even dream of embarking on a training program without putting in place some kind of kind of measurement measurement met, met, measurement process top ranker top rank top rank training providers don't some don't simple suggest your measure progress over time. They insist on it. They understand that the true value they deliver isn't in how great their training is. It's in how great the results are. And next time you are selecting a training provide, feel free to use this chart list as a checklist. After all, it took me 20 years to build it. Meet as well, take advantage of it. Might as well. A man. Okay, what did you get from this one? Mm. What the meaning of measure? I have a measure. Okay, uh, measure is when you are able to how can I explain? It mean that uh, the results of uh, production is going to be 95%. So that is a measure when you are able to calibrate, to say, uh, depending on a standard, regarding to a standard, you will be able to measure something. So it might be a number, it might be a percentage, but you will be able to measure. In this case, the progress, it means like um, when they provide a training, we expect, for example, that after the training, the production increases 25%. So that is a measure. Mm -hmm. I think that the first example that's used in the, the paragraph is that the reason is that the, all the athletic, at, athletic or athlete athlete or um, profession that need to training for to um win or uh, to or um, alcanzar la meta <laughs> i don't know reach the goal <laughs> and reach the goal is need to have a lot of um uh, training that uh, all the people all the, this person needs to step by step to or a different progress. Um, but uh, he has results. And if the training is good, uh, but not is easy, um, all the, all these at, athletic, uh, fast athletic. Athlete, but for uh, the 
other level per se like this uh, the, because if you win or you pass step by step you better in this um uh, career <laughs> career <laughs> career <laughs> like this that all depends on the reason that you do in all the training because is that the reason what the people see and say that you the better bear in this uh, I don't know say like the no sé cómo se dice um, como en las divisiones las divisiones que tienen ellos o los atletas o cosas las divisiones okay. uh, very good yes uh, thank you very much and actually this is very important I mean uh, this I really like these simple five steps you know uh, actually I know these are the most important things that the most of the companies they do not offer that one so of course at the end they will be able to measure the progress or provide you at least to the company the way for for you to measure if the training was actually good if they were able to to learn the skills and uh, if reduction increased or many other things so definitely that is very important good good we're going to finish today with a video and of course you are going to provide opinions or comments have you ever listened to that story about it's a book actually the book is uh, called who moved my cheese have you ever listened to that one or heard about that one yes okay. it my cheese right something like that yeah so mm -hmm. we're going to check about that one right now here we go and then we're going to provide comments short opinions. Who Moved My Cheese is a fable about four characters who live in a maze and they all love cheese. When the cheese disappears, Scurry and Sniff enthusiastically head out into the maze to find new cheese. On the other hand, Hem and Hor feel betrayed and complain. They waste their time and energy hoping the old cheese will return. Hor realises the old cheese won't return, so he sets out into the maze in search for new cheese. He writes what he learns on the walls, hoping that Hem will follow him. Eventually, he discovers new cheese and sees that Scurry and Sniff were already there. Cheese is a metaphor for what you want to have in life. It could be a good job, loving relationship, money or health. The very core message of the book is this. Things constantly change, so we must adapt. The quicker we adapt to change, the more satisfied we'll be. With that said, let's cover the key lessons by looking at a real life scenario. Tim was an author and sold books on Amazon. He got paid $5 every time someone bought his book. This was his cheese. He loved his cheese. But recently, Amazon made a change to their way of paying authors. They introduced a new program called Kindle Unlimited, where customers could download his book for free. The catch is that he only got paid for the amount of pages that customers read. He didn't like this. His sales were dropping. He got angry at Amazon for taking his cheese. He spent weeks sending nasty emails to Amazon about why they should give his cheese back and complaining to his friends. And then there was Dave. He was an author as well. Instead of complaining, Dave sought out new cheese. This brings us to lesson one. Change happens. They keep moving the cheese. Dave accepted that change is inevitable. Amazon is constantly updating their business systems to meet the demands of their customers. Lesson two. Anticipate change. Get ready for the cheese to move. Dave expected things to change, so he was not surprised when Amazon changed their payment system. Lesson three. Monitor change. Smell the cheese often so you know when it's getting old. Dave was able to anticipate change because he kept up with the latest news about Amazon. He talked with other authors and paid attention to the frequent emails Amazon sent him. Lesson four, adapt to change quickly. The quicker you let go of old cheese, the sooner you can enjoy new cheese. 
Dave knew that hanging around and complaining would not change Amazon's payment system, so instead he quickly adapted to the change. Lesson 5. Change. Move with the cheese. To adapt to the change, Dave thought of ways to boost his sales with the new payment system. Through brainstorming and creative thinking, he was able to come up with several techniques that would encourage the reader to read more pages in his books. One technique was to combine books that weren't selling into one that was. That way, the reader was likely to read everything. As a result, his sales began increasing again. Lesson 6. Enjoy change. Savour the adventure and enjoy the taste of new cheese. Dave was happy that his work paid off. His success didn't end there. He created an online course to teach people how they could adapt to Amazon's new payment system and it sold like hotcakes. Okay, what did you get from this one? We got, uh, we must uh, get used to not stay in the comfort zone. Uh, everything changed, everything is uh, moving uh, around us. And if we don't walk or move in the same rhythm, we're going to stay or lose uh, even money, health. Mm -hmm. Very good, that's actually true. I mean, we need to understand that everything changes mm -hmm. and that we live in a dynamic world where yeah. we also need to change, right? That is very, very important. Mm -hmm. Anybody else's? Hello. Uh, um, I understand that, for example, if we reach one goal that we set previously, and we have to to motivate ourselves, and in order to to get more, and and also we have to anticipate to the bad thing may occur. So. We have we we will be get ready for for that change because we know that uh, yeah. sometimes we are up, sometimes we are down. So it's not like we always be good in this life. So we have to anticipate to to, to the bad things and get ready for the change because, for example, if we get a good job, we have to keep in mind that tomorrow we could be fired from that job. So we have to anticipate and because in, in that situation, when we are in that situation, uh, perhaps we don't think clearly and we act by just uh, the feelings and, and we don't have a plan. To, to follow, so uh, I think we have to, to plan every step in our life. Very good, perfect. Very nice analysis, I liked it. And uh, you know, maybe the most important or most difficult part is that one, anticipated change. Um, we expect everything to change, but we sometimes, I mean, it's difficult to anticipate what's gonna happen. We know that many things might be happening in many ways. I mean, for example, right now, the economy has been changing, right? Everything is very expensive. We don't know what's going to happen. I mean, and that is happening not only here, of course, it's happening in the, all the world, in the US, in Europe, it's, uh, it's complicated. So what is going to happen next? So we need to move and change, right? Also, from the point of view of the training, this is very important because we have to understand that everything changes and that we need to, to change and help people in our company change with us. So we need to understand that changes and then you need to move on and, and 
and provide the tools for the people change with us, change for the better, right? Definitely. So it's related with that one. Um, any other opinion about the book? No more. Okay, so we're going to finish the class. I'm going to check the attendance, of course. And uh, let me just check here. Let's see. Here is it. Okay. Ada Azucena Cáceres Mendoza. Present, teacher. Good. Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present. Good. Dani Josué García Martínez. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Heidi Eugenia Salguero de Rivas. Present teacher. Good. Iriana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Irene Azucena Cuellar Álvarez. José Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Present. Ok. José Osmín Rivas Navas. Present. Good. For you is the 101 today, José Osmín. José Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. María Alejandra Barrientos Romero. Present. Good. Ramón Enrique Mata Escobar. Present. Good. Roberto Luis Umaña Orellana. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. Steven Vladimir Villacorta Rivera. Suleima Yvonne Moreno de Hernández. Present. Perfect. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure to be with you. I hope you have a very good night. Be careful with the rain and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank Dreaming. you. Good night, everybody. Good night, night. everyone. Thank you, teacher. Good, good night, everyone. everyone. Bye. Good night, everybody. Night. Hello, Jose Osman. How are you? Uh, great, great. Working. <laughs> Still working, really? Yes, yep, I have like scheduled from 1 p.m. to 11 p.m. Oh my goodness, that is grave jarring, that is very heavy. Yeah, a little bit, but actually so it's no good now because it's back to back. So, okay. so yesterday was a really nice day because it was like easy day. Oh, okay. Yeah, and today now, so I can say that it's back to back day. I see. And I'm uh, checking here the report <laughs> that I, I already took 66 calls today. In my 66, that is a lot. Yeah. How long have you been in that schedule? Um, let's see, around. Eight months, I can say, because actually they changed me for around three months in in a different schedule, starting from seven a.m. to five p.m. But I, I just took calls for two months and half, I can say. Okay, and so are you used to to sleep during the day? Yeah, so actually, so. I, I usually wake up around 8.30 or 9 a.m. So you that is the normal schedule that I have. You don't that, sleep that, that I have to wake up. Okay. 
And well, you, I guess you have experience with the one-on-one. So the first question I want to ask you is, how do you feel that you're moving on with the classes? Do you feel that you're learning, that you're getting some things? Uh, yes, of course. So, so basically, so I was learning with, with the previous coach. So about how we can like improve conversation. And now, so I can say that it's cool. So get the reading uh, like step because in order that we can increase our level, so we have to pronounce so correctly too, right? Yep. And, I, and I can say that it's, it's really nice that part so that you are implementing. So with these classes, so it's cool. Okay, perfect. And uh, do you have any question about any topic, any uh, like anything about this module or the previous modules? Uh, no, uh, right now also no. I can say that there is no question about. Okay, perfect. So, and uh, I was wondering, uh, so you're taking English calls? Yeah, English calls. Okay, and what is that yeah. about? Uh, so this account is GAP. Have you ever heard GAP? All Navy, Banana oh, yeah. Republic. Yeah, the yeah. brand, the cloud. The brand. Yeah, so it's customer service. So, but but actually, so I'm like placing orders too. That is kind of sale. But we are not getting the app sale. <laughs> oh. So it's just customer service. I see. And I believe that you get a lot of angry customers. Is that so? Yeah, so yeah, not all the time, but yes, yeah, so, so we are getting angry customer. So it's once they, they don't feel that the result that, that we are providing, so it's the, the ones that they are respective, so they are get angry, but sometimes they are cool. So. And what do you do when they are angry and you know that, I mean, you cannot do anything from them. Yeah, I cannot do anything. So basically, I just try to make empathy, provide a really nice empathy in order that they probably so decrease their feelings. And also, so I try to like provide like resolution or courtesies in order that they can feel that we are like take care of her issues, their issues, sorry. So in order that they, they feel that they are treating in a good way. Yeah, I know that that is difficult. I mean, I'm not that patient to be honest with you. I, uh, I believe that I, will, I, I could do some technical job or sales, but customer service. Well, I know it's very difficult because of that, because there are many, not many, but some customers that they are angry and I mean, you are there for, for to listen i mean but you, sometimes you cannot do anything else right that's right so and actually so it's hard to me because i was like in a sales account so in the previous account that i was so it was cool right because what if we have in a sales account we, we have to like reach the goal to to sell right but here, so the, we have to like treat people in order that they can provide a good survey. So it's like uh, we are like uh, faking so our service. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So yeah, I, I guess that must be kind of difficult. Very good. And uh, what do you believe is the most difficult for you when you're speaking in English? I mean, it's difficult to speak, to listen, to read, to... I don't know. I think that is to speak. Yeah. So I can say that sometimes I can get the, the information. So once they provide details, so I can get some of the ideas. But when I try to like to get a new topic, so it's kind of difficult, right? To to find it the correct words in order to say it, in order to explain. So I think that is to, in order to speak. So that is the, the hard way that I get it. Yeah, sometimes that happens. Sometimes, I mean, whenever we are 
speaking sometimes there are some words that we don't know some vocabulary or we are, i'm not sure about how to organize the ideas right and so uh, yeah that's right understand so the best that you can do is to try to start thinking only in english i mean on your daily activities think in english i'm going to cook this i'm going to uh, wash the dishes whatever you want to do uh, in English, and then if you see that is something missing, or if you feel that the idea is not correct, you can then think about it. So how is it going to be that one? How can I express this in a better way? And that is going to help you a lot. Yes, that's correct. Okay, perfect. Is there any other thing that I can do for you? And uh, no, no, yeah, I can see that. Appreciate your help, and thanks so much for that. Oh, it's a pleasure, you know. So whenever you need, uh, if you need help, if you need uh, to ask something, you can do it on the class. You can do it directly with the, um, uh, the chat or in the group chat, definitely. Sure, I will. So thanks so much for that. It's a pleasure. So see you tomorrow and have a good night. You too. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye now. Take care. Bye-bye.